Hey, it's Mike Hambright with Flipner.com. Welcome back for another exciting expert interview where I interview successful real estate investing experts and entrepreneurs in our industry to help you learn and grow. Today I'm joined by Duncan Weirman. Duncan's the president of Weirman Group, where he's a single family, a multifamily real estate investor, a mentor and coach, and he's really known as an expert in marketing and lead generation and teaching other people how to do that. So today we're going to discuss the truth about online lead generation. And it's critical and how critical it is to stay focused and be consistent. It's a very important ingredient in real estate investing. Very, Before very we get started with Duncan, though, <laughs> let's take a moment to recognize our featured sponsors. RealtyMogul.com is an online marketplace for real estate investing, connecting borrowers and capital from accredited and institutional investors. Get a rehab loan fast and close in as little as 10 days with rates starting as low as 9%. For more information, call 888-296-1697. B2R Finance makes loans tailored specifically for rental investors. They can help you unlock equity from existing properties so you can get cash to grow your rental portfolio. That's huge, and it opens up lots of opportunities previously not available to rental investors. Need a loan? Call 855-819-4412. Or visit B2Rfinance.com today. National Real Estate Insurance Group is the nation's leading provider of insurance to the residential real estate investor market. From individual properties to large-scale investors, National Real Estate Insurance Group is ready to serve you. We'd also like to thank Creststar Funding, Mid-Atlantic IRA, and Renters Warehouse. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of Flipner.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Hey, Duncan. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Round two. Hey, thanks, Mike. Yeah, round two. Thanks again for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is such an important topic. I think a lot of people that get into real estate investing You know, a lot of what they learn about is kind of maybe the sexiness of a deal or holding up a big check or any any of those things. But none of that ever, ever can happen without leads. (laughs) So it's going to be an important topic. And that part, you know, strangely enough, that part doesn't get discussed as much as it should, because obviously it's critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I think so much people put emphasis on the, you know, the deal itself and how to do a deal that they never put enough emphasis on, well, I got to go out and get some leads so I can make some offers and figure out how to do these deals. Right. And the most of the information people are putting out there about how to go find leads is it's minimal at at best. And um, I got to tell you, I see more real estate investors who do some marketing. A lot don't do anything. They kid themselves. But those who do some marketing, you know, they get maybe five, 10 leads a month. And then, you know, they're, they are, they're beating their head against a wall trying to make a deal out of this thing. I'm like, you know, yeah. why don't you just do more marketing and go get the easier leads? Put more, so, in, put more in the hopper. Yeah. Yeah, more in the hopper. It's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, before we dive too far into this, Duncan, why don't you kind of tell us your – for those that don't know, you tell us your, your background. And uh, I know you're uh, – like me, you're a corporate refugee and how yeah. you find your way into real estate investing. Yeah, I am a corporate refugee. Um, I, I uh, got fired by my board of directors back after uh, the tech crash, and uh, I had I was a CEO of a software company, and I uh, had to come back to the United States. Came back with nothing, knew nothing. Uh, I was looking for a new way to make money, and uh, back then it was just like you know, man, I just got to do this, come hell or high water. I have to perform. You know, I had to feed myself. Right. And uh, yeah, I think one of the first courses I ever bought was Carlton Sheets. I hmm. uh, did everything wrong. I struggled a lot and thought, oh, gosh, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. So I put my CEO cap on and, you know, just started creating new ways to do new things to get different results. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And, yeah. and, and, and when did you really kind of start investing? Like how long has it been? Well, I remember I hit the street running when I came back to the U.S., man. I literally started, you know, within a week after that. So June 2003 was my start date. 2003. I'm an investor, right? Yeah. And we're going to talk about online lead generation, obviously, here. But yeah. uh, man, has that changed in the last 12 years, huh? It has because the Internet happens. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah. so uh, that was a big one because I was doing 
things that most investors do still do, which is those traditional methods of they're doing their letters, they're doing their bandit signs, you know, they're doing their call cold calls, door knocking, like do those still work? Yes, to a point. They're not getting the same results they did from, you know, ten years ago. But, you know, the point is if anybody's doing some marketing, something's gotta work, but I'd like to do it the easy way. And I'm a lazy investor. It's like, man, just give me a ton of leads and I'm going to cherry pick the easiest leads and yeah. I'll be the other ones out. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, how have things, would you say, uh, what are the kind of some of the biggest things that have changed over the last couple of years in terms of, uh, certainly online lead generation? Well, um, when you first got involved in the internet, you know, all you needed was a website, maybe a phone number, uh, what people are looking for now is they're looking for a full service site. They're looking to get instant help. They want to know instantly, can they get a cash offer, you know, how you work. So, uh, you know, before some people say just put up a couple squeeze pages and that's good. It will give you their information. Well, today you have to earn their, you know, their trust to yeah. get their information. And, and it's about now exposure. How big are you on the internet that people are going to think, okay, this is the guy who has the brand message that meets my needs, that I'm willing to give him uh, my information and do business with him versus all these mom and pop me too investors. Yeah. Yeah. So and there's a, there's still a ton of people online that have these websites that look like they're 10 years old. They probably are 10 years old. And so you know, those... Yeah, so you, you can't play that game anymore. You don't stand out for sure. No, you know, you, it, it really is about, you know, how am I unique? How do I stand out? Why am I better from my competitors? And it's a, there's, a, there's an online battle out there. So yeah. you have to be very clear in what you do. And um, I think it really comes down to, first of all, an investor has to focus. You know, before they even do any lead generation, figure out, who they are, what they do, what value they provide, and then they're going to go and put a marketing plan together uh, about well, who there is, who is their typical client, where are we going to find with them and connect to them, and, and what is our message to that client. Um, and once you have that, um, then you go forward and you have this message that has to be different from everybody else. I got to tell you, if, if I hear one more person say we buy houses for cash, any reason, any price, I'm probably going to puke because everybody in the world says that. So, yeah, so you have to stay out uh, yeah. of, of that of that way. So focus on a niche like I have one lady and she only focuses on um, divorcees who have to sell their house, you know, or they're <laughs> looking for a new house, you know, um, even in myself, myself, you know, in my uh, fix and flip business. The market that we segment to to sell our houses fast to is the first time home Latino buyer in LA, hmm. right? You know, in our um, in our multifamily student housing business, you know, we're looking for a type of student who wants X and parents who want X. So um, everything is very well thought out to who is our end client, how do we message them, and what are we saying to them? And, and that's why we get so many leads that we do besides all the marketing. Yeah, that's interesting because I think most real estate investors have this shotgun approach to I'm just going to cast a really wide net. I'll, you know, uh, I'm in the opportunity business, so right. I'll figure out a way to monetize that if, as long as I get leads. So uh, kind of talk about the pros and cons of that mentality, obviously, then versus focusing. Right. Um, well, here's the thing is you got to remember online is that. Uh, they're they're going to not only check out your site, they're going to check out three other competitor sites at the same right. time. If they're in the oper if if you look, treat it as an opportunity, it's like, well, this guy is a prettier website, or this guy he, his phone rang had a better voice message, you know. So, ugh, you know, it, it's about how do you make your site appealing to your end client that they want to give you their information. What is your follow up process? You know, what is that user experience? Are you giving them the content they need to make a decision? You're the one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how do, um, from a technology standpoint, um, I guess, are you talk about, I know you're, you're very focused on technology and building technologies. I mean, do you use, uh, there's always still a requirement of, of people, obviously. So are you, right. do you use uh, virtual assistants or do you have, how, how do you kind of run the ball people-wise? Well, I do use virtual assistants because just because you're marketing online and you have a website, 
it does not mean you do not have any human interaction. Right, you have There's to. There's got to yeah. be human interaction somewhere. It's at what point. Now, the virtual assistant can take a lot of that heavy lifting off you, along with technology can take that heavy lifting off you. But if, if people really look at how the business, pro, or let's say the workflow happens, and they start writing it out and systematizing it, like, well, do you really need to do that? Do you really need to do that? Can I outsource this? Can I you know, automate this? So I know, hey, only at this point do I want to talk to them. You know, otherwise, you know, one of my five virtual assistants is out there going to pre-screen them. Yeah, yeah. And talk about for the average, you know, person um, that's newer, how they kind of ease into because you know a lot of people for a lot of people technology is overwhelming. Right. Setting up processes is overwhelming. I mean, talk a little bit about how uh, you kind of well, advise people to get started. Yeah. You know, first of all, people have got to wake up. This is a business. It yeah. is a business, and it's going to make your head hurt a little bit to think <laughs> it like a business. You know, somebody just doesn't say, "Well, here's a million dollars. I'm going to go open up a million dollars," uh, you know, and make a million. And McDonald's says, "Hey, guess what? You're going to come to Hamburger. You, you got to sit up here for two weeks and have to learn how to do all these things." Yeah. You know, so first of all, people got to wake up. They got to learn how to market, and and then you know, take it in small steps. You know, if you've never had a virtual assistant before, well, hire one just on a project basis instead of a longer term basis to try and do one of the things. Yep. One, you've got to be clear in what you want them to do. Don't micromanagement. you got to remember people are people. Yeah, I mean, I had employees underneath me and I always hated dealing with employees. But, you know, I have a head VA. He looks after four other VAs. But the thing is, um, you have to really hold them accountable. So every day, you know, in the beginning of the morning, guys, this is what we're doing today. Follow the plan that I've outlined at the beginning of the month. Do you understand it? Is there anything else I can do to help you do your task today? Okay, great. Go for it. At the end of the day, via Skype, I'm saying, guys, give me the report back on today. Show me my leads or show me where you pre presented me that you well, I say promoted me so I have more content out there. Yeah. So you you got to manage people. Yeah. Know? Yeah. You cannot do this business alone anymore. You yeah. need it. <laughs> no doubt about it. And yeah. and so uh, you know we were going to talk kind of talk about the truth with online real estate or with uh, with online lead generation. And so what are some of the you know misconceptions I guess that people have? And let's kind of talk about you know kind of fact versus fiction here. Sure. Well, I, I think a lot of people have heard, oh, social media marketing. I got to um, get a Facebook page, a Twitter page and all that. Oh, that's all fine and dandy. They have a page. But if they're not going to post to it at least three times a day, I mean, you do three shows a week. If you didn't do three shows a week and you only did one show a month, you wouldn't get that much leads, right? right. Or, you know, that many viewers, for that matter. So people, you know, even with their blog, they got to pick the social media and the marketing methods are going to do, but they got to be consistent with it. And when I say also consistent, you know, three, four times a day, they got to have a better message than just saying we buy houses, you know? Yeah. And, you know, if they're not providing valuable content to these people, what's the point? So, you know, th that's the truth. Yeah. Set up these sites, but what the heck do I do with them now? You know, yeah. people have to think, you know, how do I provide value? Yeah. Yeah. And I think you would probably agree that a lot of online kind of marketing has really evolved to educating, right? Teaching, providing value, providing information instead of just ads, 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 right? Correct. That's yeah. the old fashioned way. That was outbound marketing when you're doing ads, you're cold calling and all that. But now we have inbound marketing and inbound marketing is content driven. But content is the look at it as content is the king. We have to earn value. But Here's the thing is engagement is the queen. So we have to start providing value in the engagement we have by paying it forward. Respond to every post. Seek out where we can answer questions. You know, I like to seek out, let's say, keywords, but I really call them social triggers. Where are people talking about getting divorced, job relocation, having a new baby? You know, uh, they want to downsize or your, their parents are going into senior care, something like that. Those are all opportunities for me to add value to how can I help to then look at me to buy their house or sell them a home. Yeah. And, and what are some kind of tips on you know getting started in, in that space? 
Well, you, you need to remember when you start real estate investing, pick one strategy. Don't be the jack of all trades. Yeah. If you're a jack of all trades, you're going to lose every time. Pick one. Become a master at it. As you become a master at it, you will define who you are and also you will learn the keywords that people are saying and searching for to allow you to hone in on them. Hmm. Okay. So it sounds like very complex and complicated. It's not really. It just takes, you know, a little bit of thought process. You know, you start with the end in mind and you work backwards. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, you just got to stand out. And it's very – everybody has a unique value and there's something they have. And what it comes down to is also stories. Everybody has their own personal story. And if they can integrate that story into what they do – it's going to make it a lot more easier and it's going to make it fun at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about for, for newer real estate investors or even those that, you know, been around for a while, but they, they just try and take it to another level. Talk a little bit about, um, how they, uh, in terms of focus, you know, we've talked a lot about the importance of focus and right. uh, a lot of people, it's so easy to get distracted in real estate investing Ooh. because the, everybody has shiny object syndrome, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm to blame for something, you know, I'm, I'm, I have some of the same issues in some parts of my life where it's like, it's easy just to keep trying to get more information and not make any decision. I think everybody falls into that pit sometimes, but real estate investors sure. in particular, there's so many different ways to make money. There's so many different programs out there. There's so many different things to distract you from making a decision. Right. I mean, let's talk a little bit about, about focus. Well, number one is people have got to turn off listening to webinars, you know, once they pick a well, I should say, once they pick a strategy, turn off the webinars because you got to get out into the field. That's yeah. where you're going to learn, right? And if you if you look at your time, number one, as like, you know, here's my full time job. Here's the time I went to kids. Here's my hobby because you still have to have a balanced life. Say I can only afford one hour a day in this business. Well, you know what? You better find another hour to hire a VA for you to do the work you don't want to do. Right. And then the work you do have to do is you turn off your email and you just focus on those tasks at hand. You know, you, it's like a business. I have to do this today. Write it down. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I can't get distracted. So, you know, I, and, and you're right. It is easy to. I start on this web page. Next thing I know, I'm reading the news over here. I'm like, oh, <laughs> the car over here. I'm like, how did I get here? You know? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, and that's, you know, that's going on in American society. I don't know why, but we have very limited attention spans. Yeah. But I got to tell you, Mike, if there's one thing I can contribute to my success is focus, even more than technology. It's that I had a goal is I had to make money to eat. Okay. Mm. That was it. Now it's lifestyle. But then, you know, it's like, crap, I got to do this. I had no choice. And that meant doing some painful things I didn't like to do, but I did them and I focused and I did them consistently until I got a result. And then you tweak the result to get it better and better. And then you start, once you crack that code, you systematize and automate and scale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I've said this many times on the show and it's, it's just a common theme that I've seen. I've, I've interviewed, you know, over 200 people now on the show and I mentor a bunch of folks myself and it's a common uh, occurrence that I see that some of the most successful real estate investors got backed into a corner where failure was not an option that, that they could accept. And right. I think that's part of the challenge is a lot of people don't have, I just hate to say it, they don't have enough pain or they don't, they're not willing to do what it takes to achieve or, that success because they can fall back on something right. else. Or, or if it's not enough pain, they don't, you know, people, like you said, they, they, people tend to go away from pain toward pleasure or they don't have enough drive toward pleasure. Right. So, I mean, it really comes down to how badly people want it. But you know what? Human beings are human beings. We know 80% of the people who come into real estate investing, just like multi-level marketing or whatever it is, who intend to do something will never do anything. They're just dreamers and kid themselves. That's a sad story. You know, 20% will make money and you'll have 5% of that 20 that will go on and rise to the top. Yeah. You know, um, I wish I could turn it around, but... You know, it, it, it's hard to get people. They say, I want to be your shining star. I'm like, okay, well, we, I give them homework. Even at my event, Mike, I gave people one assignment the first day. How many people did it? Zero. I'm like, why? Well, I was tired, you know, or my internet was too slow. I'm like, okay, so day two, I'm going to give you two things of homework to do. I'm doing on, I'm going to do it on Monday. 
I'm like, you guys, you got to be kidding me. You know, you're loving yeah. all this information, but people don't have a knowledge problem. They have an implementation problem. Mm. You know, you can't break the Internet. So you can always go back and fix it most of the time. So yeah. it's frustrating to me, you know, yeah. it really is. Yeah. And the sad thing is, is it's like you said, it's it's an internal it's it, it's an internal problem. I mean, it's a mindset problem, if you will. So yes. it's like there are proven people like you and lots of other folks that that have achieved success. And it's not because not necessarily because you're smarter than anybody else. No. It's just that you were willing to kind of stay focused and do whatever it took to, to get up over that hump. And I think that's hopefully if folks are listening to this and they're like, yeah, I'm guilty of being a slacker, like. I tell you, you're the problem. I never <laughs> thought I would be where I was. You know, I was sitting in the seminar. I was listening to the speaker like, oh, man, it's so old school. I'm doing this and get more leads than he's talking about. And I just said, you know, I just said to a few people at lunchtime, hey, you know what? This is what I'm doing. And the next thing I knew, I had a flock of people around me. You know, yeah. oh, you should teach that. You, you know, you should tell people that. You know, here, you know. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, people need to wait. Oh, just to get a wake-up call. You know, I, I wish I was – it was a, a – easy as just you know here's the thing is i can get students 100 leads like this overnight and i'll say well how many did you call none i'm like what you know what's going on here so i said okay we'll make it really easy so i do a say we're going to get you the leads we're now going to voice blast them so you don't have to call them you can only talk to the ones that call you you know like oh no oh no you know it's a little bit easier for them but they're still they're still afraid you know yeah. Get over their fear and move on. But, you know, we can use technology to at least get the phone to ring for us. Yeah, yeah. Well, let, let's talk about kind of the evolution of lead generation. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of where things have been and where they're going. And maybe you kind of share your thoughts, too, on <clears throat> kind of the efficiency of the real estate investing market. Because I think some opportunity – it seems like the market is getting more efficient with more tools to generate leads, more way – easier to sell than it has been in the past – um, you know, in some ways easier to buy. And so the challenge is, is the market, you know, I would argue a big part of what worked in the past was the fact that the market was so inefficient. So you could come in and, right. and make things happen and it's getting more and more efficient. People right. are, because of that efficiency, people are starting to be willing to accept, uh, less of a return and, you know, all those things it's, it's effectively making the market more efficient. I don't see it ever getting fully efficient, but just kind of how that's, how that's changed things and where you think it's going. Right. Well, it, it, it really is a lot of – it really is efficient from when it was 12 years ago. Sure, I mean, yeah. You have websites where you can go and look at houses. You got – you know, you can find comparables online. You can go and drive a street online. Um, so there's more options. You know, people can tell right away, can they get approved for a loan online? So, um, you know, that's making it easier to s sell homes. Uh, yeah. Investors can do research and figure out are these areas hot or not. Um, you know, even your site flip nerd is giving the opportunity to people to come and just find wholesale deals online. You know, if yeah. you're looking, if you are a wholesale or a fix and flip guy like me, man, I don't got to step out of my house and talk to anybody and, or I can go look online. Here's all my wholesale deals presented to me. Yep. How easy is that? You know, so yeah. what the MLS doesn't provide me in deals and wholesale deals, oh, all these investors are giving me over here at flipnerd.com. I mean, yeah. you know. How easy is it? You know, yeah. so uh, yeah, it's, it's involved a lot. So the thing is, people have got to stand out with their brand to get noticed. That's the big thing. Is hello, I'm over here. I'm open for business. Yeah, you, know, you got to know what you know, what value they provide the people, and just keep articulating it. Yep, yep. And so, Duncan, you're you're uh, at the forefront of kind of technology and real estate investing, certainly from a lead generation standpoint. Where where do you think things go? Where do things go from here? Well, that's a good question um, because will there be another Facebook? Yep. And will there be another Twitter? Yep. You know, the next best thing is right around the corner. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but there's going to be something. You know, the technology keeps evolving. Uh, as technology evolves, as sites come up, you know, I'm going to be trying to figure out ways. How do I get leads from it? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we have software and every month we update it. I'm always brainstorming. How can I do my business better? You know what? I want to bring my cost per lead down. So, yeah, I don't know, Mike. You know, it's, it's, it's exciting <laughs> because, you know, there's so much cool stuff on the Internet and I just got to keep coming up with new ways to get leads out of it. 
but I'm I'm looking for the next Facebook. Next time I'm going to invest in it earlier. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of the important things from a mindset standpoint is just, I think I've seen, you've seen, I'm sure you've seen it too. A lot of people that, that, uh, they just got surpassed because they weren't willing to change. They just kind of had an old way and they stuck with it and that's what they knew. But I think this day and age, if you're going to be around for a while, you've, you just have to eat, like you said, I don't know what's coming, but something's coming and you just have to be ready to evolve with it. You got to adapt. You got to be flexible. You know, during the 2008, you know, downturn, I didn't lose any money at all because I'm like, something's not right here. You know, this is going to happen. So, you know, I started selling off all my single family residential and getting in the multifamily because I'm like, something's not up here. You know, you just got to read, you know, and just got to stay, you know, you got to stay in the game and listen and feel. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, don't, I honestly, I don't know what's next, but I'm going to figure it out, whatever comes my way and, yeah. and be part of it, you know. Yeah, that's, that's a great attitude. You have to, you have to. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun, yeah. you know, for me. Yeah. You know, some people go to Vegas and put in quarters to get, you know, a whole bunch of quarters back out. Man, I'll just put in money in the market and see how much, you know, how many leads can I get out of this puppy, you know? Yeah. I don't get anything. I consider it buying data. You know, okay, that <laughs> didn't work, you know. Now let me go and do this and see what I can get out because I only yeah. need really one deal to, you know, make it back very easily. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Duncan, I know you have a number of tools and information that you share with people. Um, if, if folks wanted to learn more about the stuff that you do and some of the tools you have to generate online leads and you know stuff like that, wh- where can they go to find out more? Sure. Very easy. If you can spell my name right, it's DuncanWeerman.com. D-U-N-C-A-N and W-I-E-R-M-A-N.com. And that'll give you a little background on me. I have a great technology blog. I love to write about technology, guys. So, uh, that's the majority of stuff I write about on there. I'm not trying to sell you a whole bunch of stuff just like, hey, this is working. This is what we're doing. You know, these are some things to consider. So, um, you know, visit my blog, you know, sign up for my newsletter if you like, you know, yeah. send me some hate mail if you like too. I don't care. Yeah. You know? I respond to everything, you know, so. Um, awesome, yeah. man. Well, we'll add the website down below for folks that want to learn more. I know you've got some good tools that are very intriguing for sure. So. Um, any kind of final words here on, on how folks can think about lead generation think about, you know, being more focused and kind of helping achieve whatever their goals are. Yeah. Write your goals down, Mm. figure out how many leads you need per month to make how many offers to get a deal. You know, you gotta be every single day. You gotta be doing some form of every day. You gotta be doing some form of marketing and promotion every week. You gotta be writing offers. You know, it comes down to that. You know, everything else is easy in my book. If I'm make, if I'm marketing and getting leads, everything else is easy. So I tell people that. Figure it out. If you want to make five thousand dollars a month, how many leads you need to get that? And um, there's a ton of different ways to get leads. Read my blog. I give a lot of free information to get leads. Um, it's not rocket science. It's just a matter of doing it. It's a sales pipeline, right? You just you gotta you have a funnel and you have to run stuff through it. It is. This is a business you know, like yeah. anything else, you know, forget this mom and pop, you know, hobby thing. You know, it's not, you know, if you want to make real money, treat it as a business and yeah. put time and effort into it and it's going to pay off. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just, I've just automated the lead gen process to take that pain away from spending lots of money on mailings, you know, and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. but you still got to call them. You still yeah. got to eat them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Duncan. Well, hey, great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. All right, Mike. Hopefully come back for show number 562. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, my friend. Please please stay in touch. All right. You too, All sir. Right, bye-bye. Are you a member of Flipner.com, the most robust real estate investing platform in existence, where you can find off-market wholesale deals and great vendors literally in your market? You can get access to advice from experts and learn about local clubs and events right in your backyard. If not, please visit Flipner.com and register for a free account. You can register in less than a minute. It's pretty much the coolest site that's ever existed in the real estate investing industry. So get on over to flipnerd.com.